Miriam has had plenty of time to fix her door after the FSB broke through it at 6 one morning. So they were banging here. Da, da. Bang here and uh, break this. The Russian security officers had come to take her husband, Amir Hussein. The prominent Crimean Tatar rights activist had been detained before, but this time was different. Unlike the first time when he was returned, bruised but free, this time there was no homecoming. 19 months later, he's still in pre-trial custody. Emir Hussein Kuku is being prosecuted on terrorism charges. Miriam shows me the letters of support he's had from around the world. This one as well, from Petro Poroshenko, the president of Ukraine. Yeah. And says the accusations are nonsense. There is nothing to be afraid of. The worst has already happened. The fact that my husband isn't near me and the grave crimes he is accused of. But knowing that he hasn't committed anything, that he is absolutely innocent, we are calm and hope that God will not leave us because he is a kind and good person. For the Cuckoo family, a missing father has financial as well as emotional costs. Sophia and Bekir's mother teaches English from home, but it's not enough to live on. They now rely on the Tatar community's charity. They're not alone. So many Crimean Tatar men have disappeared into prison cells that an organization has been started to help their families. The situation was acute. Normally they are very patriarchal. The man is the only one earning the living. The women often have many children, five or six. They don't work because of their way of life, and employers wouldn't exactly hire them. They had fear in their eyes because they didn't know how to feed and dress their children. In some ways, those in detention are lucky. Crimea SOS, which advocates for the return of the peninsula to Ukraine, says Tatars make up 14 of the 19 people who vanished without trace since Russia began its takeover of Crimea, and all of the six people killed. One of the more recent disappearances was Irvin Ibrahimov, last seen alive being bundled into a car by uniformed men in May 2016. Things are hard for Amir Hussein's wife and children, but as Russia continues its clampdown on perceived separatism in the Tatar community, at least they know he's still alive. Rory Challens, Al Jazeera, Crimea.